it was like 2018 or 17 maybe i read uh, alex graf uh, your, your co-founder on blog post uh, called microservices and monocycling <laughs> uh, s- s- saying more or less that microservices are overrated uh, like uh, of course you need to s- have service oriented architecture but the mono ser- uh, microservices are overrated um, this is how you how you see this this another trend microservices Yeah, look, so I think this is a very interesting topic, you know, to talk about. So uh, in general, I think we are still, still, you know, having the same view. I think, let, let me start from, from, from the beginning. So yeah. first of all, I think that everyone agrees nowadays that, you know, monolithic applications, you know, are not the best practice anymore. Okay. So I think this is like checkbook. So yes, so check. checking this <laughs> check, Checked. Okay. So now, you know, there, there are a lot of people out there in the market, especially in the commerce market, who try to convince the market that, you know, the only solution not having a monolithic application is going microservices, mm-hmm. which is absolutely not true, right? In fact, it's even, you know, wrong. And mm-hmm. maybe even you could say a bit dangerous, you know, telling the market, you know, that this is kind of the, the only uh, approach. Why? Because, I mean, and you have consulted, I would say, hundreds hundreds of customers worldwide i would i would say right so did i and so did many of others who yeah. hopefully listen to this podcast and i would say you know for my 17 years now in commerce you know i've maybe met three to five companies in total that uh, that that can master you know a microservice architecture well and by master i mean get all the advantages yeah. And not the disadvantages. 99.9% of the market can't even operate a monolithic application well enough. <laughs> like in terms of deployment, of you know, course. zero downtimes, yes. slicing the team, so getting you know the performance in place. And, and now you give them a much more complex, a very technical kind of things where you distribute it across hundreds of small modules, different versions of APIs. Yes. Very absolutely. often companies companies mm-hmm. would lack. Uh, the, the the wides in terms of teams, so they would not have you know the the necessary amount of product owners in place, architects. They would not be able to manage contracts well enough. Uh, DevOps is a thing. So so they kind of yes, they don't have the they end up having no monolith anymore, but much more problems instead, right? And no and, and not the upsides. Yes, ab- absolutely. Yeah, I, I see. I, I see the same. That the, the DevOps problems with the microservices, for example, is becoming you know. Uh, very very important like i mean uh, the the maintenance cost and uh, the total cost of ownership is is uh, is getting higher and higher because you, you have this huge huge complexity you know yeah absolutely so so the way we always we think and maybe to add to it it's it's also a very technical way of thinking because business users and this is important do not think in modules. I do not think in versions of modules. I do not want to yes. deal with the complexity of managing dependencies mm-hmm. and contracts, etc. between them. So what they think, so the category they think in is capabilities, right? So they think about, so when they come to us, they're like, Boris, I need your PIM or I don't need your PIM because I have my own PIM. Right. I, mm-hmm. I want to use your CMS. I don't want to use your CMS. I want to mm-hmm. use your search. I don't want to use the search. Mm-hmm. Well, Boris, I have my dedicated pricing service because our pricing logic is complex. You know, I just want your system to consume this pricing via an API. So, uh, you know, we call this capability and Gartner refers to it, you know, as packaged business capabilities. I think, you know, in this composable enterprise kind of world mm-hmm. uh, that we are in, I think, You know, uh, us following the PBC approach is is, is something that is uh, you know much closer to our hearts and is really reflecting and reflected in our architecture, where you know you talk about business capabilities, they are completely independent, coming with their own d- data access layers, APIs, etc. You know, and the user does not have to care about in how many modules underneath the capability itself this is implemented, right? And I think this is the kind of in between if you have on the low. In the in the in the in the in the left corner you have the monolith which is you know complex to manage, uh, uh, and then on the upper right c- corner you have the uh, the microservice architecture. I think in between is the PBC thing. And this mm-hmm. is something we are doing. I think this is the right approach. You know we are ver- getting very good feedback uh, from users uh, uh, and you know from customers. Um, so again, you know don't get me wrong. I think every once in a while in in in, in many use cases you will have the need to build maybe a, a dedicated service or two or three or four. So this is, there's nothing bad about encapsulating sure. you know, things into services provided via API. But just do it, you know, in a black and white manner. Just do microservice because you don't want to model it. I think it's not the right approach. And giving a, a, a standard average customer, you know, hundreds of services instead of one big application yeah. is is will most likely not lead to better TCO, will not lead to better 
you know, operational costs, but rather give them a lot of downsides and no upsides. Of course. I even uh, I am even up to the uh, conclusion that the microservices should be um, should be decoupled and, and such granular as your team structure is. So if you have two teams, you can probably maintain two services and it's good to have it separated because they can work on their own pace. But if you have one single team and 20 microservices, <laughs> the, the, the burden of maintenance is, is very high.